Hi, I'm Bill Berry. Welcome to our Desert Adventures. As many of you know, I've been exploring the Army's Desert Training Center camps located all over our Southern California desert. Many people are unaware of the fact that there's a naval equivalent of those camps situated along the southwest side of the Salton Sea. Known today as the Salton Sea Test Base, this abandoned facility was the site of numerous military activities beginning in 1940 and continuing until 1987. The base was originally established for World War II seaplane training, but the Salton Sea was also great for dive bomber training, torpedo training, and it was even used for testing of parachute landing systems of the Project Mercury space capsules. I took my friends Jeff Mueller and Jim Gilmore out to the Salton Sea test base so that we could explore the area. The first thing we did was check out a crash site from a T-38. On January 3rd, 1966, one of the Air Force's top test pilots, Captain George Merritt, hit a guy wire on a radio tower near Cane Springs on Highway 86. He ejected from his crippled T-38 and it crashed moments later in the vicinity of Airport No. 3 of the Salton Sea test base. Not much is left of George Merritt's jet. We found the wheel, a little bit of a jet engine, and hiked around for a little bit and found various parts. After looking at the crash site, we hiked to the top of a large sand dune to get a good view of the Salton Sea test space and fly the drone over some of the abandoned facilities. One of the things that is really cool about this spot is how isolated it is. Yeah. Right? If you, if you go You could see a large abandoned building just a few hundred yards from the sand dune we were perched atop. And next to that was the remains of one of three airports known to exist on the Salton Sea test base. It was there that Jeff told me about his grandfather, who was a naval aviator. So we're out here at the Salton Sea and Jeff, Tell me, your uh, grandfather was a naval a aviator, wasn't he? Correct, yes. No, he was, um, he was one of only a four uh, tor uh, torpedo planes that uh, left the Enterprise to enter the Battle of Midway. And uh, he was one of the four that returned out of the 30 that originally took off. On June 6, 1942, Lieutenant Harry Mueller and his two crewmates launched from the USS Enterprise in an effort to stop the Japanese fleet at the Battle of Midway. The TBD Devastator was an obsolete plane, but it was the only torpedo bombers that they had for that battle. Every one of the crew members knew that they were on a suicide mission and more than likely wouldn't make it back to land on their carrier. He was, he was a career Navy man, yes. Career. Well, Harry did make it back, and he rose to the rank of Lieutenant Commander in the United States Navy. I can see up above us that you've got a sword mounted. Right. And is that the sword of your grandfather? Yes, that was the sword that he was given when he was got his first officer's commission. Huh. These were true American heroes. They knew what they were up against. They knew they had to take the risk and off they went. Here's a description by one of the pilots. It would perform moderately sharp turns, but I wouldn't roll or spin it. Its glide ratio was rather short, and although it was modern in 37, it was obsolete by 1942, and well, we knew it. What a unique connection to the training that went on in the Salton Sea test space. So from here, we headed on into the test base itself. When we got to the main paved road that normally takes you into the test base, it looked like it had been covered with sand. As a matter of fact, the sand kept growing and growing and growing. At one point, I actually stopped on the 
side of a sand dune that was probably 10 foot high, lowered the air pressure in the tires, and took the chance of making it over the top. Because of the constant fluctuation of the sea levels in the 1940s, the Navy built a dike all around the facilities of the test base. When we drove in, we came in on top of one of those dikes. The remnants of the old seaplane pier were still there, and you can see that the water level has receded significantly in the last two decades. Just to the north of the pier were two buildings. One was an old electrical building, and the other was a building designed to hold cameras to film rocket testing and the dropping of atomic bombs. Here's what's left of the mounts where the cameras sat to film the tests. Once we had explored the camera building, we headed out looking for the ammo bunkers that I had seen on Google Earth. The road kept disappearing because it was covered with sand, but we eventually discovered one of the bunkers. As you can see here, it's got a large concrete slab in front of the main door. This is used to deflect a blast in case there's an explosion of the ammo. When we looked inside, you could see there was a lot of sand and it looked cool inside. For those of you who don't know, Jeff does not like snakes. And when I walked up and I said, boy, this looks like great Sidewinder habitat, he immediately refused to enter the bunker to take a look around. I walked on in to film the back of the ammo bunker and look for the Sidewinders or any evidence of animals that might be living in there. It looked like there might have been a pack rat or two, but that was about it. Well, we hiked to the top of the bunker just to get a look around. And in all directions, you could see concrete slabs and the remnants of this old base. And you realize there was a huge amount of history here. Well, as you can see, there's still a lot to learn about the Salton Sea test base. It has a history of over 40 years of activity from 1942 to 1987. From seaplane training to dive bomber training to torpedo training, hitting targets with an atomic bomb from 35,000 feet, testing parachutes for the Project Mercury capsules. There's so much to learn about the Salton Sea test base, and I plan on coming back to explore even more of it. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. We look forward to seeing you again in our next episode.